and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Well, good morning. Welcome to St. Peter. I'm Jared, the pastor here, where our mission is to build the church by developing fully devoted followers of Jesus. And today in our sermon, we'll continue our preaching series, Love God and Love Neighbor, hearing today about how the time is short. So let's not mess around. Rather, let's spend our time and energy on love. Now, today's worship is something that we all do together, so you're invited to join the congregation's parts, which are printing these bulletins. You're invited to sing the songs with us as well. Those are some of that's printed in here. Other things will be in those cranberry hymnals, and of course, everything you need is up there on the screen for your convenience. Now, for those of you who are listening now on the radio or watching later over on YouTube, we'll point you to our website, which is stpeterhallettsville.org. Again, that's stpeterhallettsville.org. Go to that online drop menu and click on uh, orders, and you can download today's order of service for your participation as you listen and watch. Now, before I begin, as always, allow me to draw your attention to these ivory slips in your bulletins. These are our connection cards, helping us to connect with one another and with God in everyday life. And so if you're a regular attender or a member here, we ask that you please fill out your name and either your phone number or your email address. And if you're a guest with, with us this morning, welcome. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship with you today. We ask you to please fill out as much information as you feel comfortable sharing on the, uh, on the back of these cards. And then later, all of us may place them in these offering boxes when we walk past them. And as always, don't overlook these blue prayer request cards on the bench in front of you. If we can be praying for you or for someone you know in a specific way, you may write that down here on the space provided, and then also place those in the offering boxes. And you'll know the people of St. Peter are praying for your prayer request. Now today we celebrate the 25th Sunday after Pentecost, the uh, penultimate Sunday of our church year. And so in our gospel reading today, we'll hear Jesus talk about the end times, well, because they're coming. And then also a happy belated Veterans Day to our veterans here. Of course, we give thanks to all of those folks who have served in defense of our country, both in peacetime and in wartime. And we also look forward to that day as we hear about uh, in this Sunday, next Sunday, that day when Jesus comes again and there will be no more tear and no more warfare. And once more, for those listening and watching, we point you over to the website, stpeterhallettsville.org. Go to that online drop menu, click on orders, and you'll get today's order of service for your participation. Now, as we hear God's word proclaimed and we join with our song and prayers, I invite you to quickly look at the back of those connection cards. You'll see a few simple next steps you may take in offering your life to God today. Following worship this morning, we have our coffee and snacks available over in the fellowship hall. And then uh, with Children's Sunday School, every Sunday we have our Children's Sunday School opening with song and prayers. And so even if uh, your child, uh, your grandchild can't stay for the whole thing, come on down, enjoy a cup of coffee, let, your, let the kids sing and pray together. And of course, adults, we have pastor's Bible study. And then this Wednesday, November 15th, no, 17th, uh, we have our now annual service of light and healing, right, before the so-called holidays begin. This service is for those who are grieving the death of a loved one this holiday season. It will be followed by a potluck fellowship of favorite holiday dishes. And the annual St. Peter Thanksgiving Day dinner is next Sunday, the 21st. The bulletin has all the details for you. And uh, the card has the wrong time. It's dine in, right? Pastor, can I get a go plate? No, it's dine in, just like we're used to. And we start serving at 1030, right? A misprint on the card, we start serving at 1030. And then the Advent services are just around the corner. Those start on Wednesday, December 1st. All those details are in your bulletin as well as on the website, stpeterhallisfield.org. So don't forget to check the announcements in the back of your bulletin to learn more about what's going on here at St. Peter. So now let us stand and take our first step together with our first song. Spread, O oh spread, almighty word. Creators call 
Heaven's gifts extend to all. The Redeemer's grace, who to save our human race, and to pay rebellion's price, gave himself as sacrifice. Tell our God the Spirit given, now to guide us on to heaven, strong and holy, just and true, working both to will and do. Lord of harvest, great and kind, rouse the action, heart and mind, let the gathering nations all see your light and heed your call. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. We flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O God, our Heavenly Father, we confess that we have grievously sinned against you in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret des and desires which we cannot fully understand, but which are known to you. We repent and are sorry for our offenses, and we ask of your great goodness to have mercy upon us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to forgive our sins and graciously to help our infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on you and has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To all who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on you his Holy Spirit. On the other hand, I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as you continue in your impenitence, God has not forgiven your sins and will surely visit your iniquities upon you if you do not turn from your sinful ways and come to repentance and faith in Christ before the day of grace is ended. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the, amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the 12th chapter of Daniel, verses 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please say the dark print of Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of light, life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is taken from the 10th chapter of Hebrews, verses 11 through 25. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? <clears throat> Lord, 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will the sign be that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. How small our span of life, O God, our years from birth till death. A single beat within the heart, the catching of a breath. A drop within the ocean's deep, a grain upon the shore. A flash of light before we sleep To see the sun no more And yet our speck of life is spent By your infinity Our tick of time Eternity while suns and stars spin endlessly through depths of cosmic space. Aeons roll and ages pass, you hold us in your grace. O oh Christ, you left eternity to plunge in time's swift stream. To share the shortness of our span, our mortal lives redeem. Build your cross closed years with love, you loved us to the end. And touch us with your risen life, that ours may time transcend. We thank you, God, for kindling faith that lights our transient years. To illumining our pilgrimage through myths of doubt and fears. For hope that sees a life beyond the swiftly passing day. For oh, love both human and divine that lifts our hearts to praise. Well, you know that old bumper sticker that reads, Jesus is coming, look busy. Now, some people don't find that humorous, even though it is. See, it tells the truth about ourselves. Far too often, we humans only want to appear hardworking when it comes to faithfulness. Especially as Lutherans who seem allergic to the discussion or even mention of good works. 
even though that's not what our doctrine, our Lutheran doctrine teaches. In fact, if you get your sheets out, your green study and share inserts, get those out and look at number three on there. Number three on those green sheets. That'll take you to the proper teachings there of the Augsburg Confession, the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the formula of Concord, both the epitome and the solid declaration. And then question number six down there at the bottom will take you deeper into what the small catechism says as well, helping you learn to frame good works in your everyday life. Now, I don't mean to imply that we Lutherans would rather be faithless or bad or apostate. It's just simply that sometime in the late 1800s, Lutherans began to lose their ability to talk about this subject until we end up where we are today with most Lutherans unable to articulate what good works are in everyday life. Right? Well, good works beyond you know, whatever makes them feel good, right? And that becomes not only their good work, feeling good, but it becomes their divine mandate to feel good. And eventually it becomes their replacement for God. Trusting in what they do to feel good as a method of salvation. Because, well, you know, Jesus is love, man, and love never says no. Can you see how hard I'm rolling my eyes? And on that last one, right, love never says no. Parents, do you love your kids? Yeah, most of the time, right? Most of the time, right? Did you ever tell them, do you ever tell them no? Uh Uh-huh, a lot of times, right? Growing up, we thought my mother had Tourette's. She said no so often, no, 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 right? In fact, good thing my parents named us Jared and my sister Abigail instead of Noah and Nora, right? You see, no is a complete sentence. As parents, it's our divine duty to tell our kids no. Because either they don't need something or something isn't good for them. Despite all the feels the kids have. Hmm. And if God is our heavenly father, maybe he says no too. Hmm. Love God and love neighbor is our theme here at the end of the church year. Every year, our cycle of Sundays and seasons begins with Advent, right? That's the four Sundays before Christmas. And it ends on the festival of Christ the King, which happens next Sunday. That's one of my favorites as we celebrate that still-to-come promised last day when the trumpet sounds, the dead are raised, some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting content. Contempt. So the entire church year is about waiting for Jesus to come again to judge the living and the dead. All of his, all of his other promises have come true. From being born of the Virgin Mary, to suffering under Pontius Pilate, being crucified, dying, being buried, to rising again on the third day, ascending into heaven to send us the Holy Spirit. And as you read the New Testament, everything points to this last unseen hope that we have. So what do we do in the meantime between Jesus' death and resurrection and his return? That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? As we just mentioned, it's become the fashion for Lutherans not to talk about doing good works. And so in the absence of that, We almost always talk about partisan politics, which can be fun, sure. Sometimes even, not often, but sometimes even useful. But that's never the same thing as good works, the actual good works God expects out of us. Again, start with number six here on your green study and share insert. So it it takes you right to the small catechism. So let's make sure we get the good works in the right place, in the right order. Too often, as we already said, we end up thinking that what really matters is our actions when it comes to going to heaven, to a better place. Jesus and the Bible couldn't be any clearer about this. No. 
you go to heaven, as our culture so ineloquently puts it, because Jesus innocently suffered and died, shedding his holy and precious blood on the cross for you. That's the only way in. To receive this wonderful gift of grace into a trusting and believing heart, trusting in Jesus and his promise alone. Just as we heard in Hebrews a few moments ago, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This gift of grace, love, and mercy doesn't leave you where you are, stuck, dying, dead in your own inadequacies, failures, and sins. It transforms you. It gives you new life. It rescues and redeems you from the devil and his evil. In fact, it makes you into what it is, grace-filled, merciful, and loving toward God and toward neighbor. As Hebrews says, For by a single offering, Jesus has perfected for all time, completed, made whole for all time, those who are sanctified. Only then, once the seed is planted and growing and watered and nurtured in your everyday life, can you bear fruit, good fruit, for the sake of the world around you. It never works backward. All right? If you don't believe me, you can go home and try an experiment when you get home this afternoon. Go take your favorite fruit or vegetable and hold it out in your hand like this out in the yard and see if it ever grows backward into a plant. Not going to happen, is it? So we got two ideas going here. Good works. The approaching day of Jesus' return to judge the living and the dead. Both of which have something to do with love God and love neighbor. That's what's so fun about that silly bumper sticker that says Jesus is coming, look busy. It's playful. Even a little cheeky. With both of those ideas, it's not mean-spirited. It's true that our time to love God and love neighbor, to do good works, grows ever shorter. So as Teddy Roosevelt would say, get action. But once more, good works are what happens after God has named and claimed us as his own, just as he does giving us new life with him in holy baptism. And I suppose, at least in our lifetimes, it's never been easier to get action on this front. Jesus promises the world does not get better and better until he returns. It gets worse and worse. So like, you know, any little bit would make a difference out there, huh? And Hebrews lays out three things for us. The assurance of faith, the confession of our hope, and urging one another to love. In fact, it says provoking one another, right? Some of you are really good at it. Right? We know who you are. Hebrews says to provoke. Provoke to love. Right? Get others to love God and love neighbor. And like so many of God's other gifts, the more we give it away, the more we have of it. The assurance of faith is what we just said. That confidence we have through Jesus to approach God in prayer and worship, just as he comes to us in his word and sacraments, trusting always in his mercy. Confessing our hope is being able to tell others about Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins, the communion of saints, and the resurrection to everlasting life. Provoking one another to love and good deeds, which is simply the doing, the concrete instances, the occasions, and the occurrences of that divine love. By loving others, we show and tell them how to love. We teach them how to love. And even better, Hebrews tells us to run up the score. How many points of loving can we post on the scoreboard before time is up? And again, start with your small catechism, just as number six tells you. You can read that on the internet if you need to. Remember what St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. 
It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And remember 1 John chapter 4 as well. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love because he first loved us. Now, it does seem that we can be urgent about just about anything in our culture except faithfulness. Because you know, Pastor, you can take that religion stuff too far. Well, most everyone we're around, most everyone we meet, most everyone we know doesn't take it far enough. It's only taken to, well, I'm a member of a congregation or I believe in God. Perhaps even I believe in the God of the Bible. But Black Friday sales, right? The shopping day after Thanksgiving in November, which actually had been going on since the first day of October this year. Well, we better not miss them, right? They might run out of stuff to sell us or not. There's always more stuff to buy. So let's frame it a different way. How much time on average will you spend with any single person this week? A few minutes, really. Now, co-workers, family, students, of course, we spend a lot of time, if not really with them, sort of around them or in proximity to them. So in other words, time is of the essence. A little urgency in our love of neighbor would go a long way. And then, with those family or co-workers or students... A little love would turn that quantity of time into quality time. However, the clock isn't really our enemy. The day the Lord will approach without our efforts, and the world will get worse and worse without us and with us, each and every day is a step closer to both. See, it's discouragement is our enemy. Discouragement tells us, what's the use? Why bother? It's not urgent. It's been going on your whole life. That's why Hebrews tells us to meet together regularly, frequently, so that we can be encouraged by God and one another. In other words, it's important to go to church every single week. We don't come together to mess around. We come together to spend our time and energy on love, receiving it so that we can give it away. Jesus is coming. Don't look busy. Get busy loving God and neighbor. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became carnal from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. <coughs> Death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated in Seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Leave in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. Even one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism, forgiveness of sin, we look for the resurrection 
the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us intercede before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the sake of the church, the world, and one another. Father, we don't want to hear about persecution, judgment, and destruction. Kindle our hearts, fortify our minds, strengthen our spirits, steal our sinews. Unite us to Jesus so that we may stand strong even in the most difficult trials, for in even those worst times, we're called to love you with all our heart, mind, spirit, and strength, and we're commanded to love our neighbors as ourselves. Give us your spirit so we desire and can do your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Bless your church. You have promised that though temples may be made by human hands, may be destroyed, your temple of living stones shall abide forever. Purify, preserve, and provide for it through your Holy Spirit. Unite it always to your Son, its cornerstone and head, and make it a house of prayer for all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You foretold times of persecution for those who proclaim you as Lord and follow you as Savior. Shield, strengthen, and bless all who endure such fiery trials. Help us to remember them in prayer and to stand with them in witness and to provide tangible help for their physical needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Perfect the faith of this con congregation so that we are bold to approach the throne of grace with our prayers and supplications. Conform us to your mind and your likeness. We pray for our mission to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus and to support Solid Rock, our mission in action. Use us to bring your forgiveness, life, and salvation to those who are estranged from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us the wisdom to identify, encourage, and mentor future pastors and theologians. The world is dying for lack of the knowledge of your lordship. You know the hearts of your people. Touch and kindle them with a passion to proclaim your son, crucified and risen from the dead, to bestow forgiveness until unto eternal life to the people who need your strong word the most lord in your mercy <clears throat> hear our prayer bless and guide all the peoples of this world let them put their trust not in any earthly ruler but in your wise governance and gracious commands teach us how to live at peace with one another to care for the poor and vulnerable in our midst and to work for the common good in accordance with your will Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> you are king of the nations and the prince of peace. And yet in these troubled times, good men and women must stand in harm's way to defend life and liberty. Guide and strengthen them. Let their labors be a blessing to many. Help us to honor all who have served, especially those who have sacrificed the most on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your dear son is the resurrection and the life. Grant healing to all who suffer and give them a foretaste of his victory over death. Especially, we pray for Violet Blair Roeder, Jody Kelly, Catherine Lockie, Cornelius Jones, Leon Klecker, Sheriff Carl Bowen, Billy Pence, Mike Fay, John Thompson, Hugh Alexander, James Evans, Christiana and, Ju and Justin Default, Evelyn Lashinsky, Verlene Zabronik, Jeffrey Morganroth, Joe Mojashek, Charlie Garman, Carrie Bezetsny, Dwayne Dixon, first responders, frontline workers, San Miguel and Transfiguration Lutheran Churches, Safe House Church, President Biden, our country, and those facing unrest and unemployment. Bless all caretakers with skill, patience, and compassion. Reestablish bonds of affection and fellowship that have been unraveled by sickness or sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, we acclaim you as Lord of life. Thank you for bestowing your eternal life upon all who died trusting in you. We ask you to guard and guide us safely through this earthly life with all its troubles, trials, and temptations. We pray for the families of Joy, Joyce Ann Pence, Kay Manning, 
Judge Mark Ivey, Ken Swarb, Jonathan Hopper, Ray and Lucy Gutierrez, Billy Dondero, Myrtle Hessler, Esther Sachs, Bob Russ, Pam Henze, David Kruthoff, John Vavrusha, Clinton Tackett, Dose Doltenberg, Jackie McGowan. Fill us with confidence that we can always, re always turn to you with all our needs and cares. Raise us up on the last day with all whom you have redeemed. Let us join the chorus of adoration and praise to you. For with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you are our joy, our delight, and our eternal inheritance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Jesus' sake, dear Father, graciously hear and generously answer our fervent petitions to your glory and for the benefit of whom we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Of course, we'll very quickly mention our offering, and for those, not only you folks here in the room, also those listening and watching, if you head over to our website, stpeterhousefield.org, you can click on that green button that says Give to St. Peter. You can learn about the different ways you can give your offerings to St. Peter, including if you brought it with you, you can place it here in the box. You may also mail it, or you can take advantage of one of our uh, three safe, secure, simple ways of electronic giving. And speaking of the e-giving, our uh, service provider, Vanco, has updated both the web page giving and the giving app. Very good update, it looks great. You can get all the details on the website and we're gonna to switch to the new format on the website December 5, all right? Now Psalm 24 tells us, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And yet God blesses us not only to give us the produce and the economy of the earth, he also comes to dwell among us and give us his blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation in person. From our joyful gratitude, we offer him these smaller gifts that he blesses for Jesus' sake, turning them into the ways and means of the mission and ministry of this congregation, strengthening us to be Jesus' body for the sake of the world. Let's join in our offering song, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, Guide them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence. And give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through who Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, 
and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, to supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those who are absent from this celebration, you are encouraged still to meditate, reflect, to concentrate, to receive spiritually the blessing here that is offered, that <clears throat> in the bread and wine, Jesus' body and blood are given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Communion will be administered here at the railing. You may stand or kneel. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks be to God.
May the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you, keep you in his grace, and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared. In the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing powers of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. Before we dismiss, of course, don't forget about the website, stpeterhouseville.org. There underneath that online drop menu is some useful stuff there for you. Um, ways that you can, uh, with whether it's the videos or it's the sermon pulled out by itself as a podcast or it's those uh, Bible study inserts, uh, each of those is one way for you to show and tell God's love that you've seen and heard in here today in worship with someone else out in your everyday life. So don't waste time, right? Share it. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Made for the glory of God, 
purchased by his precious son, born with the right to be clean, us victory has won. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with bind us together with love. Of God, you are the promise divine. You are God's chosen desire. You are the glorious new wine. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cord. Cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cord. Together with love. Go in peace, serve the Lord.